Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a good Monday. I want to touch on something. Uh, I know I keep saying, oh, one of these days I'm going to tell you what my history is and why I'm so interested in this cryptid stuff. I know, I will. But, you know, I know you guys really like the Bigfoot stuff. So I, I try to do a lot of that or most of that. But really, there is so much more than just Bigfoot. And a lot of stuff is so far out there that people just don't believe it or uh, have a hard time with it. But I've got a couple of stories that I'm just going to say to heck with it. Let's do it. Uh, one I've had for a little while now, just a short story. But the other one I got today and... I was like, wow, I I really like this story and I'm going to go and tell it. I know you guys like your Bigfoot stuff, but just have a listen. Let me know what you think. Okay, on with the story. Okay, this one is titled A Story for You from the UK. Uh, hi there. First, I just want to say thank you for your channel. I genuinely love putting it on while I'm settling down for the night and listening to all those fascinating stories. Secondly, I'm from the UK, and while we have a plethora of cryptids, they are, I fear, mostly the subject of folklore and cautionary tales told by parents to ensure law and order in their children. I certainly don't think we have Bigfoot lurking in our UK woods. They just aren't big enough, and we are too densely populated. I did, however, want to share an experience I had in the UK woods many, many years ago, circa 1986. It doesn't involve Sasquatch, and I'm not sure it could even be called a cryptid. So I totally understand if you don't share this, but I sure hope you do. It was summer, and my friends and I spent the day playing in and around and up trees and in the stream that ran bright and clear at the foot of the woods. It was time to head home, so after saying goodbye to my mates, I began my two-mile trudge home. At the risk of a distinctly rose-tinted hue to this recount, it was a perfect summer day, which passed by in a halcyon haze beneath a plump English wood. As I came to a quaint and ancient medieval bridge that crossed a little weir and into a field beyond which was now a sea of wheat baked beneath the summer sky, I became aware of the sunlight that stabbed golden fingers through the leafy canopy to play host to the pirouetting insects buzzing lazily in the warmth of the light. Somehow the sunlight seemed more golden, crisp, and defined and the usual passive drone of the dancing insects seemed somehow persuasive, loud, and almost hypnotic. I figured maybe I was just overly hot and decided to sit beneath a tree and cool off. As I sat there, my gaze was suddenly drawn towards the ancient ragged bridge and rocks that the stream leapt and foamed over. On a large rock in the middle of the stream sat a small figure. He had a long white beard and a bald head around which a tonsure of wispy white hair clung to. He had two long pointed ears that stretched behind his bald little head. He had nut brown skin and was unbelievably wrinkled like a walnut. He was dressed in a long frock coat and black pantaloons from beneath which protruded two skinny legs. He appeared to be cooling his feet in the rushing water of the weir. I could not believe what I was seeing, and I shot up, both terrified and exalted. At that moment, the little man whipped round, and I'll never forget the, forget the look of horror, shock, and surprise that crashed into his puckered little face. He whipped up the tricorn hat that had been resting on his knees and promptly vanished. That was enough for me. I hightailed it back up the trackway and didn't stop running until I crashed into the lane that crossed the top of the woods. 
with my lungs bursting and my hair a mess of sweat, twigs, and leaves, I tried to take stock of what I had just witnessed. The strange hue of light and the enhanced sound, that ancient little face, the coat, the hat, and the wispy beard plucked straight out of a fairy tale. I had no doubt then or now that I had encountered one of the little people, denizens of our woods and streams. I feel both privileged and humbled that I caught sight of one of them, but honestly, once was enough for me. There, I hope you at least found this an interesting encounter, and while not technically cryptid in nature, I hope you feel it deserves an outing on this wonderful channel of yours. Keep up your amazing work, and I hope, if nothing else, this has inspired you to keep one eye open for that fleeting moment in the corner of your eye. If you catch it, you might be lucky enough to see one of the little folk there, too. They are there, and all we have to do is look. Be safe and be lucky. Jim. Jim, I have to say, I really, truly enjoyed that. Mind you, I had a heck of a time reading it. <laughs> uh, we don't speak like you guys do in the UK. But honestly, can you guys imagine seeing something like that? I've had a couple of those experiences over the years where you have to blink a few times and wonder if what you saw was real. But that's what this is all about, this cryptid's world, right? It's about... Uh, things that exist that aren't proven. And uh, we just sit here having experience after experience and hope to heck that somebody believes us. That's what this channel's for, right? Okay, guys, I've got another one. Hang in there. Okay, this one is called The Creature in Toronto. Uh, she just starts out, Hi, Leslie, my name is Zion. I listened to your channel and a few others, but I decided if anyone was going to get my encounter, it was going to be a fellow Canadian. This experience is probably the strangest thing that's ever happened to me, and I'm very glad I had another witness, my mother, to corroborate my experience so I know I'm not crazy. Every once in a while, I'll remember it, and I'll call my mom and go over what we experienced that night together. I recently was walking downtown and I froze when I realized where I was and the memory came back to me again. Here's what happened. When I was nine or ten, my mother and I were coming home late. The sun had already gone down and it was well into the night. But in Toronto, especially downtown, the streets are always well lit and bright with cars and buildings and street lights. I was walking ahead of my mother on our way home to the building we lived in on the Esplanade. We were walking down Church Street when I saw something moving in the alleyway. At first I thought I was seeing a big raccoon. Then I thought maybe one of the stuffed animals from the spaghetti factory had been put in the dumpster. But then I realized as I started to get closer, what I was looking at was an arm reaching down into the dumpster. From the fire escape, a very long, lanky arm covered in dark brown hair with five fingers and claws at the end. I followed the arm up the fire escape and my eyes met this thing, this huge thing. As a little kid, I didn't care about cars and Power Rangers or Pokemon. I only loved animals. I spent every chance I could watching the the Discovery Channel, and the Animal Planet. So my little brain was reeling, trying to identify this thing. It was the biggest thing I had ever seen. Its whole body took up the fire escape. It was all dark brown with pointed ears and a long face like a lemur. With me standing there, it just kept eating and ignoring me until I stepped a little too close to the dumpster as I examined it. It turned its head and looked at me with the biggest and brightest orange eyes I have ever seen and slowly started making its way down the fire escape, never breaking eye contact. It never showed any aggression, no growls or showing teeth. It actually never made a sound. 
and the impression I got from the look on its face was a look of curiosity, almost as if it was shocked that I could see it. I remember it had one huge hand on the ground and it was leaning towards me when I guess my mom had caught up to me. I remember it breaking eye contact with me to look at my mother and her hand going from my shoulder to my hand as she pulled at me. She said, come on, and we backed out of the alley. She didn't scream or freak out. She didn't say anything. She just took my hand and walked me out. And the creature didn't react either. It just lifted its hand off the ground and watched us walk away out of the alley. I looked back at it the whole way to the sidewalk, and it just watched us leave still holding on to the fire escape. I asked my mother what that was, and she was quiet for a while, and she just simply said, I don't know. I think about this often, and we still talk about it, and I promised it's 100% true. We both saw it, and I know it makes no sense. How could this giant creature exist in a world, let alone the middle of Toronto with all these people around? unless it has some way of making itself invisible. It couldn't just live on the rooftops because people would see it moving around from all the top tall buildings and condos. And it couldn't live in the sewers. It was way too big to fit down a manhole. Leslie, this it was huge. Its limbs were long and lanky. All stretched out, it would be about two times the size of a grown man but it was real and alive and life has shown me way too many things for me not to think there are many things beyond what we know. Sorry for the long run on sentences. Just wanted to let get it all out. I hope this is good enough for your channel. I promise with everything in me that it's real. I love your channel and your voice. I can hear your life in every word you speak and it's beautiful. That was a very, very sweet thing to say. I really do appreciate it. Um, You know what? I I believe that for what this is worth, that we're just a small little piece of the puzzle. I believe there are other worlds, and I believe some things have access to our world. Doesn't mean that they're bad. They just get caught up in it, and we're not supposed to see them, but sometimes we do. That's my opinion. I mean, I could be wrong. My dad would say, um, I think you're a little bit out in left field, but that's my opinion. Anyways, guys, I think I'm just going to stop there. Uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. We'll see you back here in a couple of days. Bye for now.